Well, did you have a tougher time waking up for work this morning? You're not alone. And here to share more about the impacts of daylight saving time, our friend, Dr. Levac, thank you for being here this morning. I almost didn't make it. <laughs> I know, it was, it was a little difficult yesterday. Wasn't it? Wasn't I, it? I had to admit, I was saying, you know, in previous years, it didn't feel as bad, but for whatever reason, yeah. it caught up with me yesterday. I'm like, wow, I feel, I feel it. Right, it's not because you're getting older. Oh, oh well. <laughs> yeah, there's that. <laughs> well, talk, talk to me about about um, some of the negative effects of daylight saving time. The, the negative effects are pretty significant. There is a 24% increase in heart events, heart attacks, oh. uh, over the, the, the few days that it takes to get used to this new time change. 8% increase in fatal traffic accidents and 6% increase in strokes. So not only do I and you and your viewers feel groggy and jet lagged and tired, mm -hmm. but there's actually a big increase in negative health effects. And, and it makes you wonder, because I know that people will argue that there are positive, there are benefits from the daylight saving time, uh, but it, you say 24% increase in, in heart attacks? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy, isn't it? It, it is. And is there, are there some of us who are affected more by this time change than others? Yes, I think uh, people who are night owls, people who generally go to bed late and, and like to sleep in a little, they're more affected. Even people who get up early, like getting up this morning to, to come here, it was pitch black. Mm -hmm. And the sun, light, is what triggers our sleep and wake response. Right. So getting to bed um, when it's still a little light or, or uh, not getting tired in the evening because it's lighter and in the morning getting up when it's dark is really, really tough on people. Mm. And women seem to have a little more difficulty than men. Okay. What about anxiety and depression? You know, if you are fragile, if you are psychologically going through stress, there's an increase in suicides. There's an increase in anxiety and depression. So it's a stressor. Sleep is such an important part sure. of our health that an hour is an enormous amount of time. You know, if you're in the middle of a dream in the morning and you have to wake up early, it really does knock off your whole day. And it takes about a week to get used to it. So, so you're thinking that the sleep disturbances might last about a week or so? About a week. Okay. Um, before you're fully uh, adjusted. So for that week, be careful. Be careful as you drive. You know, driving here this morning, I noticed that for a minute, there are micro sleeps where there's for a second, you kind sure. of almost nod off. Just be careful. And don't be afraid to take a quick nap during the day. Oh, yes. You, you shouldn't sleep for an hour or two. But if you can take a quick nap, if you're finding yourself driving and falling asleep, mm -hmm. you're better off getting off the, the, the motorway and taking a quick nap. A quick nap is what, like 10, 15 minutes? 10, 15 minutes. And you'd be surprised. It really does help. It so helps. Yeah. I, I still enjoy my quick 10 minute nap in the you afternoon. Do. Although mine is a little longer because of our schedule. <laughs> yeah, well, you're up early. Right. Well, is there anything that we can do to make this transition a little easier, especially this week? Well, it, it, it's good to prepare when it's too late now to, to gradually move ah. your bedtime uh, and your early morning awakenings, moving it up by 15 minutes a day. But now we're here. Mm -hmm. Get out in the sun. Okay. Do sit in the sun. Light is your friend. It, ch it, it helps your circadian clock, your rhythm. Exercise, avoid alcohol for a, 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 a few days. Um, avoid cafe too much caffeine in the afternoon. Uh, okay. And then in the evening, if you can't get to sleep, take a hot shower because the research shows that the sleep response is kicked off when we start to cool down a little bit. That's mm. why you want to keep your bedroom not too hot. But if you take a hot shower and then allow that cooling response afterwards, it can kick off your sleep so you can get to sleep sooner. Well, Dr. Levac, here's to better sleep. Here's okay, to better yeah. sleep. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, and I hope we do get better sleep this week. I All know. right, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.